basically everyone needs to step Except up Taco. because no, yeah, yeah, Give Taco Deagle, he'll do well, <laughs> but we didn't see CMIBR at all. They were not on the server whatsoever. Yeah, that's true. I do think, though, that this map is one that just favors their team so much more at the moment. It looked like they were lost on that B site, whereas this time, I think that once they get the double orps, they're going to be a tough team to break down. However, they are starting on the T side, which makes things a little bit more difficult for them. Breaking into these sites can be difficult. And look at the aggression already coming in from this CT side. Walking all the way down. This is interesting, though. KNG may have just thread the needle perfectly as he now looks to push in through Ivy. They've already fallen back and the rest of his team are trying to make their way in another direction onto this B site. So realistically, if he can be a little bit sneaky, it could be perfect. He does manage to find Henny, but Yuri's going to quickly be able to trade. And this might give the rest of the team the confidence to now just bolster up in B. Let's see if any going for some shots. Always gets the assists on the uh, suicide there, jumping off the top. Looking for the second, but unfortunately able to land. K Serato though, still alive. And we saw K Serato already do some amazing things on overpass. He might do it yet again. Taco's gonna fall. It's gonna be a two on two. Yuri with the kit. Fallen even trying to push up, trying to get aggressive. K Serato gets dinged up, but Yuri's gonna be back alive on the back site, trying to do something about this. But look how passive MIBR are playing. So smart. And they will be able to take out the round. I mean, finally, I don't know if you could just hear it, but I finally heard some life within the team. Yeah, the other thing as well is, like Dust mentioned, Lucas wanting him to step up with the entry kills. He gets three kills in this round. That may be more than they got in the whole of the first half of the last map, which, which is, no, no, that's already a massive step up. Like, a big confidence booster. You saw that Henny was getting pretty loud in the last map. If he's now going to start doing the same, we could see a complete role reversal. I mean, I, I would believe that just because Maybe Henny... they'll just switch places. <laughs> Well, I, I believe what you said, by the way, about like like three kills total in the first half because Henny had like only three deaths in the entire first half. <laughs> Obviously, they have they to have keep inverse scores. Uh, yeah, so we're going to see now Fury with the buy. Double scouts, though, for Art and Henny. And then my BR. I think if they can take the first couple of rounds here, they're going to be very confident into the rest of the series. Yeah, I, I really love a double scout. Yeah. And I love it on this map especially. There's so many avenues to really get it working. Obviously, there's limitations elsewhere with the Deagles alongside just a 5-7. And you heard Art talking, by the way, about like the double op. He's saying that MIBR have a strong double op setup. But to be fair, Art, as we've seen over the last two days, it still has a pretty damn solid op. And we've yeah, seen Henny hit some ridiculous shots as well. So I don't think you can count them really out in that kind of sense. Obviously, you know, Fallen and KNG is, is a little bit of a different story. They're going to be at least classified as better offers. But we know Fury have an enemy. Look at that. Yuri with the 5-7. That puts the like second and third. What is happening, Yuri? He closed out the fourth as Lucas is going to be there with 13 HP. He won't be able to, but so much damage has been done. They still have a scout on Art. The bomb is going to be on the side of Furia. You can't count him out. You can't sleep on him. Furia is just off to a flying start with Yuri getting a triple. Yeah, and it's left now all on to KNG. He's trying to be a little bit sneaky. He has a Mac 10 though, so he'd still have to shred these final players. And what a round from Yuri. That came from absolutely nowhere. Just that 5-7 spamming away at the heads of his opponents. And... He has just single-handedly won them around. So, yeah, that good start that was initially there from MIBR is, is now completely gone. And, and that's the thing. A lot of the times when it comes down to the pistol round now, if you win the pistol round and lose the second, you're in a far worse position than even if you just lost straight away. It sounds ridiculous, but financially, at least, because now they are going to have to force into things. The next round would not give them enough cash to even get a buy on the board, at least without a bomb plant. They're gonna oh my god! <laughs> All right, so he gets a double douche. Lucas and Kanji already below 30 HP each. This is one of those situations where he doesn't even know how much damage he's done. Right. Like, there's no way he could possibly know that he's done what, like a 170 damage or something absolutely ridiculous at the beginning of this one. Molotov will be going down, and yeah, that's as easy as you like. There you go. <laughs> Finding out. The amount of damage has been done across the board. Yuri's going to be the one to make all of the money as well. It even turns round, but a couple of deeks from Fallen. Get the bomb down. That that would be pretty impressive considering he's now tagged down to just 2 HP. And yeah, I don't, I don't, see, <laughs> I don't see this one happening now. Will finally be closed out. And yeah, again, of course the coach is going over to Yuri because he is just... He's won them two rounds. Although I will say three of the four players he hit there were tagged. Yeah. I mean, he still got the kills, though, He did, 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 did and still get the kills, and he made a load of money. Yeah, he did. And, and I feel like the fact that two rounds that are always been able to do something like that is going to make MIBR second guess going towards inner. Maybe not in this round, since obviously they only have Glocks, but this is a start that Fury's going to be happy with. Double up. I wonder if we're going to see that come out of Furia. 
I would be surprised if we didn't. In all honesty, like I, I think that when Art was sort of saying that in the interview, I think it's a bit of a cop out. Like I almost think that you're looking for that, like the, the sort of compliment from uh, from Stunner, just like, oh yeah, and then, you know, they have a really good double up setup, and then Stunner's supposed to go. Well, what about your double up setup? Like almost like set it up for that sort of thing because they do have a very good double up setup. Like Art as a primary orper was fantastic, and it was only because they were able to now get Henny in the team that they decided to give it away. But like you still see him every once in a while, just glass cannon orp and just run around and get kills. So yeah, I, I I would be surprised if we don't see it. I think the only way we don't see it is if they're really successful elsewhere, like the rifles are just working, or if he's playing hyper aggressive. Although on this map, that can be quite difficult. Like maybe you can try and challenge Ivy a little bit or go for some upper pushes on B. But a lot of the time, like you're, you're still almost waiting for them to come to you. Like you're looking for information, but the chance for you to like overpass, push around and be a little bit ridiculous on, or on Mirage where you can counter us the CT side. This map, it's a little bit more tough. Well, we're going to see one off for Henny. On the other side, just the SGs, even a Galil for Fallen. Not the ideal buy for the Brazilians on the attacking side. And they're going to leave Yuri alone at the back of side. Going to go for the early presence in towards the outside position for Furia. But MIBR, out of what, the four rounds you've had now, three of them have been in her. And now four with our fifth round. And I'm not sure if this is going to work out necessarily. They should be able to get in the site considering the position that Fury are defending with, with Yuri that far in the back. And they're just going to go for like, the contact play. It's going to spot them coming through now. The rotation is going to come in to help out. But Yuri, more importantly, has stayed alive. He's not fallen just yet, so they're going to have a five on five retake situation. And no one even flanking him from the back out of Fury. So this is going to come to two forces butting heads. Yeah, first position is going to be an integral one, him being so far forward, but the SGs are doing the majority of the damage, and I think Fur's even going to go hunting to try and get some of these weapons out of their hands. You can see the CT side looking to try and retreat, and Fur, well, he can smell the blood in the water. He's going to go sneaking his way through, maybe a little bit too far behind. There's a chance to catch Yuri before he gets around the corner, but can't connect the shots, and now may just have to make the decision, okay, let's secure our own finances. Let's not risk too much. There's still going to be some money on the other side. That's the other problem with losing that second round is you really can give the finances away. And just look how much utility they had left. A couple of smokes. I think they had like three flashes. They didn't really have to use too much to get into that site because the position that Fury were playing I don't see a lot of pressure on them now. I mean, they're, they're, if I'm not mistaken, they should be guaranteed to get through to the second group stage. But obviously, you don't want to have to play a couple set of matches extra to get through into the finals. If they win here, they're through. That's it. But let's see now. No op still. And we have the double op coming for Furious. So we were asked, wondering if we're going to see yeah. it. And we're definitely going to be having it happen. Art and Henny going to be picking up these two big greens. Currently, Henny going to be holding towards Ivy and Art over towards the upper position on the inner bomb site. Can't say I'm overly surprised to see them brought in. Both players very proficient and the map allows for so much more space to be taken away when these weapons are in play. Case Serato looking like he's tempted to try and challenge into A main. The Molotov's also going to force Art off. He goes for the peak. High risk and no real reward just yet. Sure, he finds out there's a player up there, but it's clear that MIBR are not really looking in that direction for now. Even still, even after he's tagged, there's been no rotation. There's a clear dedication to this A site from the Furia side. They are believing in the push from MIBR in this direction. And for now, they are correct. Vinny's going to have to be forced out of Pop Dog, but it's so late into the round. 40 seconds left, but this is where they look to make their execution. Fur's going to get two entries, but there's two trades back. In fact, K Serato from above is being a menace once again. The bomb is dropped, but KNG will drop him in return. Moving back into a 2v2, and Yuri now just holding onto the cross again. The time starts to become an issue here. Oh, he's going to find him through the smoke. That's the bomb now. Taco has to try and retrieve it or get that final frag. And I think Yuri is actually pushing aggressively, just waiting to see if he goes for the bomb plant. He's heard all the footsteps. This should be his to have, and he will get it as well. A big play from this man once again. 10 and 3 on the scoreboard and just leading the way in their round victories. I don't know what the hell you could say about that shot through the smoke. 
luck, game sense, whatever it is, the fact that he picks that up, gets the bomb down, wins them the round. There's three letters I'm thinking of, and one it begins with a V. Can you, can you continue? I think I think Twitch chat will know. Hmm. It's back, Jason. I think where someone's cheating. Yeah, I've never I've, I've never had to deal with it. <clears throat> so <laughs> you're, you're gonna actually get super aggressive towards inner. Catches out Taco. Doesn't give him the position on the map, and considering the weapon he de it did have, he upgrades straight to the SG, and that's going to be a big win for them. Oh, gosh. That nade was so perfect. KNG just had to sit and watch, and, well, a little bit of twin action coming in as Henny has managed to find that opening pick. Furious economy still not in a great state just because of how the last round went, but they kept the double orps, and... More importantly, they have a two-man advantage in this round. KNG's hoping that there is somebody giving him a peek, but it's just not happening. They're holding passive angles just in aggressive positions. And Arts playing these last few rounds has given so much space. Like, if he goes down, there's going to be a fast rotation coming in from Henny to get that AWP onto the ramp. If he doesn't, they've got no real reason to move. And while he's finally been forced off, there comes the rotation. By the time anybody would be there to push in, there's already a second player ready and on this site. And it's going to be a tough take, but are they going to double back around? Fallen is already in pop, and they're looking ready to push into this A site. Both ops actually over towards the inner side, too. Vinny with the ump. Case are already being tagged up. Vinny actually might have the opportunity to pick up a kill, but that smoke comes through and actually prevents him from doing really too much. First pushed. I was going to say, he's pushed really far past the smoke. Vinny actually doesn't catch him out. So now with two ops, the question is do you go for the retake here and try to save these weapons into the next round? It's gonna be a four on three. They get a couple of early shots, and they're gonna have the opportunity. But I would, I would assume with that kill coming through, they're just gonna back away. They're gonna try to save this one. You don't want to give over ops to the enemy team. You definitely don't want to lose them, considering what you can do. Still looking for a bit of a play, but Fur has just been fantastic in his positioning. Looking to close this out all on his own. Three kills for him, and Henny just wants to try and duck out of this one. I can understand it. Like you don't want to give away a four versus three round. Realistically, that, that should have been theirs. Instead, MOBR turned that back. That is going to be off the back of this man here. It didn't get to do too much in the last map, but again, we sort of said at the time, I don't think that was through any fault of his own. He is that man who always lurks around the toilets on the A site of Overpass, and they went B every round, so... Not really too much for him to do other than try and retake one versus three. This time, though, they're using him well on this T side, letting him sneak around, take map control, and just be that thorn in the side of Furia. It's a little side note, by the way, Tom. Do you think Henny and Lucas are keeping track of how many times they kill each other? Honestly, like, I, I like the idea of it that maybe they're going, aha, I got you. Or maybe afterwards that they'll have a little look back through the demo. But I think when you're in this moment, like when you're playing, it, it doesn't matter who comes up See, in the kill I'm feed. imagining them, like when they go back for holidays, you know, meet up together, have a nice <laughs> little family dinner. And, you know, one of the brothers is like, hey, remember that time I... Uh, I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining the mum going, well, you know, you are the second best counter strike player oh. in our team. <laughs> <laughs> when I know which one's her favorite. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, oh, but, but why did uh, Henny get a bigger present than me this year? Well, Because Henny's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, into round number eight. We are able to maintain the op on the Henny. A scout for Art. A force up out of Fury, which we saw a handful of times yesterday in their match versus Envy, though it didn't really seem to work out for them too well. But again, with Yuri just playing up close, I don't think you can really count them out if MIBR do go this direction. Yeah, this is another one of those purchases, though, from Furia that you, you do sometimes question. Like, sure, there's the save door, but the rest of the buy around it is just not a particularly good one. They've spotted the push coming in. Yuri, again, is going to be able to get the opening pick, but just look at Fur. He utilizes the madness to gain so much control, pushes forward, gets tagged straight away though, and Henny's been going ham in the meantime. A couple of kills off the back, he gets fur as well as he looks to run away, and now it's left all on to KNG. He needs to do one better than his orping counterpart, as it would have to be a 4k, he still has the bomb though. 
And this will allow him to reposition completely. There's yet to be a rotation back in. It's finally coming in from Henny. And Kenji spotting, but he doesn't connect the shot. They now have the information, however. But he should be able to get some sort of bomb plant. And there's not really anything they can do about that. So at least he turns this into a winnable situation. The problem is he's going to be surrounded by multiple different avenues. And Henny doesn't even give him the chance to get into the clutch. Four kills for him. Another big round within this series. And um, wow, he has been fantastic so far. He's been having just a big series. I mean, we saw him on overpass. Look at the smiles on his face as well. He's like, yeah, I'm getting a bigger present this holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting this one. But no, he's been playing amazing. And considering he's been quiet over the course of this group, mm. he hasn't really showed up. Yeah, you mentioned pistol rounds before. We saw you know a couple of uh, big plays out of him. But all in all, it's been about art for the most part. Yeah. But today, it just seemed to have changed. Yuri's been stepping up. Henny's been stepping up. It's been the duo between them that's really been locking down these rounds and securing these kills. I, I think the biggest change has been Kei Serato. Like, I, I think Yuri was, well, yeah. Yuri's still been good throughout the last couple of days. I, I think Kei Serato has been great in this series, whereas in the other matches, it was arguable that he wasn't necessarily playing his best. So a good step up to see. Gresh are going to be coming in once again. Fallen, he's been so good with the Deeg and actually manages to retrieve an AWP. The bomb is going to head its way into this B-site already and this is now becoming a winnable round and it should not be possible. They only invested pistols into this one. Luckily for their opponents, there's no armor available. Okay. Though. All right, Henny. He's really feeling the moment. He's feeling this match here. He's going to be pushing up. He'll spot out the player towards right. He takes a chunk of damage. Case Serato, the man you talked about before, comes through. Gets down K and G on the flank. But falling with the op, you cannot sleep on this man. Down to two players. They do have a kit to, to use here, but the time is taken away. Fallen coming around the corner just trying to survive. And somehow the CT side of Fury is starting to fall here. K-Star gets the first, but he's not gonna have time to defuse. And Fallen with the Deagle running through on the site, catching out Art. They're gonna take the round. I don't know how they did that. So all they had were pistols, but they pulled off in the end. Yeah, well, you can never count Fallen out on train. I think we've learned that many, many times on this map, but that was ridiculous. Running through a Molotov gets the first kill and just continues from them on with the AWP. Those are the sort of rounds that you can't really afford to let slip if you're Furia, especially if you're on the CT side. Bear in mind that a lot of the time this map has sort of become the hardest T side within the game at the moment. Like, it really is difficult to grind out rounds. It's, there's not been too many innovative strategies as of recently. It's mainly been similar things thrown in once again. It's difficult to surprise the CT side. And more importantly, they're struggling to really get their money going. K Serato tries to be the hero off the back of a flashbang, and instead, he falls early in this round. First, surely going to expect art. Like, that's literally trying to take something out of his own playbook and use it against him. It isn't going to work out. This 5 7 from Yuri is just disgusting. I don't know how he keeps being able to do this. He's got to be careful, though, because rounding the corner, Fallen is there and returns normality to what was a force by round for Furia. Look what Lucas has, by the way. Ugh. <laughs> I, I Was that a miss by? Was that intentional? I don't even know. Like, I, I, I would say, based off how they've been playing it, it seems like a miss by. It doesn't look like he's actually done anything with it. And it's one of those guns where. You don't really buy it on the T side of any map other than Dust2. Dust two. Two. I suppose Assault, maybe. <laughs> That's the only one I can actually uh, yes. think of. The good old uh, EPL matches on Assault. Yeah, no, about those. The, the, the classics. <laughs> Kenny S using the auto sniper. Remember the grenade only challenge on the rats? <laughs> Let's not. But yeah, scoreline equalized. There's been a decent amount of big plays from Furia, but ultimately you just look at the score and it's five all. The T side equalizing things here, and, and that is a scary prospect because, as as said, like we do see a lot of strong T sides out from Furia. That's something they have been good at throughout the tournament so far. But doing it on train is another thing altogether, and doing it against what is one of the most prominent double op setups in the world is going to be very difficult indeed. I think also we're starting to see like a little flaw within the team, is that. Again, they like were forcing up round after round after round. They're not saving to have like a, an actual stable buy with a lot of utility to use. They're trying to go for some cheeky plays by, you know, flashing out Serato, I believe that was over towards Ivy. It's the last three rounds they bought. This time with the off for Henny, Vinny already taking half damage from that grenade coming through. 
But it, it, the thing is, if you're doing this kind of buyout, you're forcing Henny to be a playmaker, or Vinny to be a playmaker. To force them to maybe play a situation they don't want to, to hit the shot that they need, and get a man advantage. Lucas, by the way, did get rid of the auto sniper. Yeah, the other thing I'm worried about as well is financially, I don't think they're going to be able to buy into the next round either. So there's a high chance that MIBR are going to make their way onto seven rounds on the T side, which we sort of gave big props for how flawless the T side was of the previous map. But it's looking like MIBR are going to return the favor here on their own choice. But once again, it's going to be opening things up and already one player dropped. A bit of damage done onto KNG. Henny still just oh. lurking around, but that's a bit of team damage that he probably wasn't hoping for. For we'll get caught off. This AWP is still here. They've got to be careful because Henny has had those rounds where he is just exploded into the server. 11 and 3 at the moment. The bomb looking to be planted and good cover coming in from Taco to stop the bomb being denied. Oh. KNG now cleans up one more, and Henny, well, he may even just have to hope to save this, but it isn't going to be happening. Fallen denies that chance. Well, Yuri left with his USP and a Zeus. I'd like to see it. But I'm trying to think of a world where that could actually be possible. I guess if he holds on the edge of, I was going to say A, like the, the A main position, but if he gets a kill here, I'll, I'll be very surprised. Not looking too good for Fury, though. And as you mentioned before, not really going to have a strong buy, if any buy, into the next round. And that which means that my VR could be going up to 7. Though I think if uh, Yuri upgrades to a 5-7, maybe they have a chance. <laughs> but still, I, I kind of wonder, what's the mindset? And actually, I kind of hope we get to talk to him about it. Like, what's the mindset of these, these four subs? Because that was the bane of their existence yesterday. They weren't able to close out matches because they consistently kept doing that. And here, they're not even in the lead. They're not even in the situation where they can afford to do that. Especially against a team of the caliber of MIBR. No surprise to see a timeout called. In terms of the fin financial situation for Fury, I, I still think it's going to be a bit dicey in whether or not they even go for a purchase into this round. We talked about whether or not you should be buying in these scenarios. It would kind of irritate me if they don't have enough money to buy here because then it means they should have bought some pistols in the last round to like the AWP right at least something because you, you want to invest at least when you have something to play with and this is what I mean so you add all those pistols to what was the open the M4 and maybe you have a slightly better purchase and of course it's very easy to like slightly misread the financial situation in these moments but it leaves that now with what is another attempted force by Vinny now showing that the 5-7 really can do damage. And actually, Henny's found another one. They've got to be careful. The bomb's currently dropped. K Serato's picked up one more. This is a round that MIBR should not be letting slip away. It's left on to Fur and KNG. Now, Fur, well, he's doing what Fur does best. He's being sneaky as all the way around the back. Spots out his teammate. Is he gonna know? He will in a second. There's the scope. He spotted it. This should be as easy as you like. A bit of a pre-fire there. And he is gonna get the kill. The bomb's still being defended by Vinny, but he does only have a 5-7, and they're just gonna want to smoke him off. Try and not give him any space. K Serato is trying to help him out, and he will connect with the SG, leaving KNG alone. 1v2. I'm not sure how KNG pulls this off. Especially knowing there should be one player around the bomb. He knows around where Serato was shooting from. We've already seen some quick shots out of him. If Serato actually faces this and KNG is able to pick up the 1v1, I feel like he actually has a good chance of winning. But it all banks on the fact of Serato surviving. And he might have his chance here. He might have his opportunity. Actually gonna head back towards Inner, it looks like. 17 seconds left. He's gonna have to pick up the pace. Vinny, he knows the bomb's gone. He's going to hear the bomb being planted in a few moments, and they're going to rotate back in towards the inner site. And I feel like just the fact that Kanji got the bomb down, it becomes more likely to pull this off, especially when they have no idea where he's going to be. They're split up on the CT side. He's going to have the opportunity for these 1v1s. But is he going to connect the shots is going to be the question. No kit on the side of Fury either, so if they're going to go for the defuse, they're going to have to get to that bomb relatively quickly. They're going to have to take a big risk here. 
They're going to have to basically gamble on it, and they do. And that is Vinny now defusing the bomb. There's actually a small detail in that round, which I really liked from KNG. So you see the Molotov that he threw there? The idea of that Molotov is to make you think that he's planting on A because it's right next to where the connector is. So it sounds like he's molotov connector, and that actually bought him a lot more time to get the bomb down. Like if he manages to stay alive a little bit longer, I think he wins the round. But he throws the Molotov just in front, so he can run past it, and they still think that he's gonna be planting the bomb A. So small detail from KNG, very smart. Unfortunately, K Serato just hit everything in that round. Like they gave him an SG and he, he demolished his opponents. By the way, I don't wanna necessarily call out the player, but Art only on three kills as well as Vinny. Having a rough start where Vinny had so many entry frags on overpass, maybe he's gonna have the opportunity when they switch over sides. But Art, the, the player who stood out, I think on day one he had 111.7 ADR in their initial matchup against Swole Patrol. I'd like to see him step up a little bit more, but then again, it's 6-6. He hasn't been too effective on the op at all in this round. Or sorry, in this half. Well, technically this round as well, since he hasn't gotten <laughs> anything. I wasn't wrong. I'm just an idiot. Oh, so we will see the outside push. And he once again is going to be getting that initial pick with the AWP. He's been fantastic and even doubles it up with a kill onto Fallen. He's doing so much, even legs his brother. And, oh, this push has been dwindled to very little. They're going to still try this. Worried about Ivy. Vinny trades what was a kill from Lucas, and Yuri adds one more. It's left again onto KNG. This time, I uh, can't say I'm much of a believer in his clutch. There was some hope in the last round, but with 40 seconds left, he's going to have to just hide within his spawn, cower back. Well, not really much of a need to hunt this one down if you're Furia. Their money's not bad, but it's still not in a situation where they can afford to throw away too many weapons. Wait, did Yuri spot him? I think he knows, uh, e either he did, or he knows that that's a high chance, so he doesn't want to go around that corner. Okay, I was going to say, if he did spot him out, maybe we could see the four men push into it. The problem is, yeah, Yuri doesn't have much money, neither does Art or K Serato. But then by BR, I mean, what are they going to have to spend into the next round? They have to hope that KNG can open things up with the op. Maybe support it with a couple of pistols. And well done by Furia. I guess more importantly, well done by Henny, who is on 14 kills, currently leading the server, tied up with Yuri. Oh, I like this. Fallen's been given the AWP for the spawn. Uh, he hit the shot, though, in mid. He's closer. So there's, this is his opportunity. He's finally been handed that AWP away from Kanji, who I have to say hasn't been able to do too much so far. It is the T side. I, I'm always going to give a little bit more slack over to the T side orpers, because it, it can be pretty damn difficult. He's actually gonna go straight down pop. I like this, but he's not gonna connect. Vinny is too quick. And now that AWP goes to waste, but luckily, wow, that is selfless from Taco. He's, he's gonna jump down there. And he, is he actually, yeah, he's gonna give up his gun. Like it's risky to go back, but definitely one that's worthwhile. They're even gonna take away the other weaponry. I like this. Not really necessary, because his opponents currently have two SGs and two orps, so. Doesn't make a difference, yeah, but, but it gives even her a still. weapon. Oh, that is true. So I didn't now realize everyone has a weapon on one. their side. So now they're pretty much fully weaponed up. They got the armor. They have some utility to use, and just like that, even with fallen dying, Taco puts MIBR in a very good position. Only downside is they don't have control of the middle. And if Lucas makes any sort of sound, I would imagine K Serato or maybe, well, probably just K Serato would actually push up. To try to counter this. The thing is, you still have Yuri defending on site. You still have Art there as well with an AWP. So it's not like they have a free path nece necessarily in towards the inner bomb site. But now the smokes are being put down. Well, we'll be in a few seconds. They're going to explode in on towards the site. Doesn't seem like Yuri had much of a chance to throw his incendiary. In fact, he's a little bit late, but he still gets away with it. Even almost gets the second. Oh. Still ready and waiting, the incendiary doesn't deny the plant, so it will at least be coming in. In fact, Art's going to be the one burning down a little bit as he looks to push and is caught out by KNG. K Serato in the meantime coming in on the flank, but it is being patiently waited for. And Henny once again here with his AWP, but he can't do anything. The brotherly love continues, and K Serato may just have to make the executive decision. 
to save his weapon. Give them something into the next round. Henny will still be able to get himself an AWP. The remaining players should be able to juggle around some weapons. And, well, for MIBR, they can't really afford to hunt this weapon down. So he should just be allowed to keep it. Well, we talked about, by the way, on uh, about Taco on the Deagle on Overpass. And he was playing pretty well. In this round, it wasn't the Deagle necessarily, but he rescues the weapons. Yeah. Like you said, stuff was played out of him to make sure everyone on his team had a, a gun to use, and it paid off for him as they are able to take the round and tie things up so far in the first half. I am worried, though, for Fury on the, on the T side. I mean, as you mentioned before, <laughs> obviously a, a stronger T sided team, but on a map like Train, you have to be damn good to be on that T side. Yeah, it, it can be very tough, and it just the caliber of players on the other side it makes it that much worse. So I, I, I can't expect that. Well, Fallen is going to slow down and the Kenji won't have a better performance. Fur, once again, is just going to be running and gunning out onto this Acer. He's maybe not got the best KD, but he has just been a problem for Furia. Finding openings and just taking away space, maybe even getting in their heads a little bit about where he could currently be. Just right on the edge of the smoke. In fact, it's going to feed. He's going to go pushing, but Vinny this time will be able to shut him down. Not much other presence other than KNG who's managed to get himself out both players well actually I think KNG might have been tagged a very small amount in fact he's gonna get hit again down to just 39 HP Vinny now in a very aggressive position and in fact Taco while blind hits the shot onto him so maybe a little bit unaware of the angles leaves now Oh, with a flash, he's going to be caught KNG saving his teammate only for a second in case Serato stuck on the site will be traded out. Yuri is in with a quick flank, though. The problem is it's smoked off, and there's an AWP holding the angle. The only really worry is that KNG does only have 39 HP. A shot from that MP9 could do enough. I think he's more reliant on what Henny's actually going to be doing, sneaking his way through, P250 in hand. Switches back to his AWP, and I think the footsteps are going to be heard by Fallen. That's the timing, and while even though Yuri does win that duel, he's not going to win the next. Fallen with another triple kill. MIBR take the first half 8-7 to seven on the T side, and I think you can see from Fallen Space, this is more of a relief for them. They're, they're enjoying themselves. They've definitely been performing better in this second map. I think they look a lot more comfortable as well. Like You can see the plays that Farah has been making. This is something that he does all the time. It hasn't really changed. Fallen as well has always been very good at this map, and he has been performing. Now, there's been a few heroes for sure from Furia, but I think they're going to need to pull out something very impressive in the second half if they're going to be able to win the map. Well, you saw that right there, Yuri. The hero player getting the triple kill with the 5-7. I think that was in the second round, if I'm not mistaken. And Fury, I hope they still have some fight left in them. Again, I would still love to see Mirage. Obviously, a 2 would be perfect for Fury here, but the potential what Mirage can offer us can be exciting. But you know what? We still have the second half to get through before we can even have a chance to get to that map. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the break.
KD from that first half of map two, because as you're seeing on the screen, MIBR actually had some kills finally, if you compare them to <laughs> Overpass. But then again, so did Yuri, 16 frags for him. He really put his foot down on that inner sight. The problem was, it wasn't that many rounds that they were able to take. Yeah, and a quiet game from Mars. It's actually been a fairly quiet series. It didn't matter so much on the previous map, but it's definitely gonna matter to them now going into the T side. Gonna kick things off with what looks like a play towards the B site, and there's already been so much aggression out from the CT side that they know is coming. They're rotating a third player already fallen, set up with a nade. They could even get a second in there as well from Taco. This could be absolutely devastating. There goes one, does loads of damage. In fact, they even get a kill off the back of it. And K Serato now fighting back. It's the trades in with Vinny and Henny, and Fallen still fighting. As he looks for a little bit more, but we're back into a two versus two, and it's a bit of a weird position. The CT side have almost reclaimed most of the site, and it's left into this one versus one. K Serato with the P250 at least has some range here, but falling into the site takes damage, but hits the instant headshot. That is disgusting. Lucas goes down, and K Serato wins him the pistol. We talked about Kestrada stepping up in this series on overpass. He's done it yet again here on train, cutting out that pistol round, getting three kills. And this man who, yeah, like you said before, we normally used to see him perform so much better. The last two days, we didn't really see much of him, but hey, this is the perfect time to step up, to give yourself and your team a chance to get straight through into the finals in Copenhagen, or not in Copenhagen, in Denmark. Close Let's enough. See. Yeah, close enough. Let's see if they can keep this <laughs> pace up, though. That's going to be the real question, especially if MIBR get the double op set up. They currently have the double scout. KNG, how far he's pushed up towards the E-Box. Fern fallen, able to chime in to take down Vinny. KNG's gonna get his first on the case, Serato, but not able to drop Art. And Lucas is gonna have to back away from the site. The CTs all pretty much grouped up towards Connector. And Yuri has a chance to capitalize off of that. Takes down two kills and pretty much locks in the round here for Furia. Yeah, good positioning from him to wreck the fire. What could have been a very dangerous situation. But uh, he's not going to be able to connect. And it's another Yuri 3K. He, he has been phenomenal throughout this series and, well, pretty much throughout the whole tournament. Like, you can't really fault him. Definitely arguments for him being the, the best player within this team at the moment. Henny also performing well. And this man on your screen as well. But at least going into the next round, we can't really expect too much investment from MIB MIBR, of course. There is going to be the double AWP likely coming up a little bit later on. You can see both KNG and Fallen with a little bit of extra money coming into the next round. So that could be something that Furio are going to have to break down. Unfortunately, well, Fur once again. This time he's on the right side of the map. The incendiary. Coming from behind, K Serato. Oh, the, how many are they going to boost up? God, do it double. Please do it double. Oh, they, <laughs> they just come in. Oh, nice shot from Lucas, at least. Does manage to kill off one. No. He's actually got a gun. And Mark Kenji's found another deagle. Not ideal. Probably not what he was hoping for, but hey, that's something. The incendiary they threw down, by the way, towards inner as they went down the ladder room. Was just ridiculous. They held off four players all at the same time. So that was a lot of damage done for MIBR, and that's a lot of extra money on their side, even though they do lose the round. Fury don't win that as cleanly as they would have hoped. And this is where it starts to come down to crunch time once these buy-ups are coming through out of MIBR. And again, I'm wondering how are they going to dislodge 
the Fallen and KNG on the Ops, which they're gonna have smack dab in this round. Fallen gonna be on the Glass Cannon, KNG with no head armor. Yeah, he chose to go for utility over having the armor there. So that this is an active choice to be Glass Cannon. Maybe it channels his powers a little bit with the AWP. Oh. And Fur has just been absolutely owned by utility early in this one. They've mentioned that they've obviously watched a lot of this team, like whether it's being like growing up in Brazil and seeing these players playing or whether it's just like, okay, we're going to watch the team from our home country to learn things about Counter-Strike. Of course, when Furia was somewhat unknown, MIBR, as they were previously named, SK or Luminosity, were the best team in the world. So maybe that double name was just something that they knew Fur was going to be there. Or maybe it was just a little bit of luck. Who knows? We could be reading into this far too much. Either way, look at the read that's out at the moment from MIBR. Three players sat ready and waiting on this B side. Oh One of them gosh. low, the nade over the top did so much damage. This is all about utility at the moment, but finally, one of the guns come into play. It's the AWP of KNG that kicks things off, and the T's have slowed right down. They're stuck within the smoke. They're hoping that it fades. Fur's very low, but he's in a bit of an off angle. And even just that one kill, considering his HP is not bad, KNG steps up once again to put down another one in its left onto Henny. Been fantastic. The smoke actually falls off, making the jump up. Is KNG going to expect him? And is he going to expect KNG? Is the more interesting proposition. He's got to be careful as well as his brother is coming up behind him. Success tingling. Fortunately, not enough as Lucas gets the kill. And then they're able to maintain the double ops. This is the question now. They've been able to see it. They've not been able to do much to it so far. KNG just staying alive towards upper was able to pretty much lock them down as well as the help of the smoke that they put right at the bottom of ramp. You saw them sit in that smoke for a good 10 to 15 seconds trying to figure out what to do. And the decision was to just eventually push through it, sending one up the ladder and one around straight towards the bomb site. But if they don't have a solution, I mean, obviously, they, they should have some sort of inkling of what to do, considering they know what they're up against with MIBR. Execution's always going to be a lot harder. You can maybe know how to deal with it, but actually doing it in the server is going to be a different story. Oh, nope, for now. It's going to go into Art's hands. He's had a very quiet performance today. Vinny going to be checking into Pop. They've left Taco as alone as the anchor player on this B side, very, but a very passive one. Like his goal is basically to spot them. Yeah. Like if he sees them coming, then the team will rotate. He's got the incendiary down now to buy a little bit more time. And it means that they can stack up this site. Interestingly, there's not much presence over towards Ivy. You can see Fur is definitely having a look around in that direction because it is so open. And in fact, they're using their psychic powers at the moment. It looks like they were about to double up instead. They've fallen into more passive positions. They're going to rely quite heavily on Fur to at least get a kill here. And Art looks to make his way around the corner. Henny, he's the bait, but actually, Art doesn't peek wide enough. Luckily, he'll get the kill in the end. That's another weapon for them to pick back up, although K. Serato's not close enough to actually retrieve it. Vinny, however, is going to find another one fallen. He spins around and picks one off with the AWP, but is caught by Yuri as well. Taco now left in the open. He's got to be careful here, but Art misses the shot. Gives him a little bit of space, and Taco just spins around. He's looking for the third. A fantastic hold from Taco to close out this round. And, well, I don't know how he survived in that scenario. Well, Taco was pretty much the best player on the team when it came to overpass and still trying to, to prove to be on that same level. It's unfortunate, though. Like you said, like Art did swing wide enough. Wasn't able to catch him out. Fur was holding the angle, but I mean, Taco picking up three kills like that, what can you do in that situation? Art just has to Kill not him. miss shots. <laughs> well, yeah, we came to the same conclusion, just went different routes about it, Tom. And now with just the Glocks and a smoke and a flash, they're going to be rushing this inner side, trying to get that bomb down. But with oh, Fur playing no. this far up, I don't know if they're going to be able MP9. to. He's got the Shredder. He's looking to just rip through their bodies with the pea shooter. Oh, oh okay. They get bomb bomb. That, that's a success in my eyes. That's money made. Okay, they only kill one player, and Taco really is just starting to pad those stats. We sort of mentioned that he was very, very good on overpass, but hadn't seen anything from him just yet. A slow start, but he's now rising up the board. 14 kills to his name. Funny thing is, when we talk about him playing world overpass, it's not like, you know, he had 30 frags, 20 frags. It's, no, he was playing the best out of a I think team he that did. wasn't performing. Did he not have 20? No, there's no way it could have been 20.
for a 16 to 5 scoreline for him to have 20 kills? I'm going to check. You do that. He had 17. He wasn't far off. It's not 20. It's three away. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there was only one player in the whole server who had above 20 frags. Let me guess. Kesarado. Yuri. No. Yuri. It was Yuri. Yeah. 24 and 13. So, to be fair, it was such a dominant performance from their opponents that for him to even have close, it was pretty ridiculous. But here we go. Tactical timeout. No surprises from Furia. They're onto that T side. And things have started to become a little bit troublesome. That last round was way too close for comfort, though. Like, you removed Taco getting a triple kill. And that yeah. round easily could have slipped away from them. And they, they had a couple of deagles in there. We're now going to go back to the group of SGs with that one AWP onto Henny. He has been good so far, but T-side AWPing on this map is a different story. Like, since going onto the CT side, we've seen a change from KNG. He's performing to a much better standard, and MIBR now into the lead once again. And if Furia managed to take this back from them, I'll be surprised. Like, this is where I think MIBR will kick it up again. They've got money on their side. They've got the double AWP set up. They have utility. It's up to Furia to really challenge them and take it away from them. If they're going to be able to win this map. I was going to say, I wanted to see more presence out of Furia towards Ivy, actually. Because MIBR have been leaving this position op or open for, I'd say, pretty much every round. You had Fur obviously defending in the last round, or the round before. But there's definitely a, a part of the map that Fury can punish with. I mean, at the moment, no one's even looking in this general direction. I think finally someone's going to rotate back to hold an angle. That's going to be fallen, but, you know, you get a smoke down, you get access to CT spawn, potentially. And then now you have a lot more of the map to play with. I thought he was going to take a shot there. <laughs> I thought he was going to ping one straight through the smoke. I wonder if that second smoke is actually a bit of a bait. I think it, well, if it is, it's working. Because that's exactly where Fallen's focus. This drop down. I think they might try and go side by side. That actually works much better than it normally does. The only problem is look how much HP they just lost. So much damage done. Fallen actually going to go pushing through, but Caserado boosted over the top is going to be able to take the pick. Now, Fur could spray down both of them. Luckily, Vinny did manage to fade back in, and Yuri has caught out first, so it's still stuck with a 3v2, or two and a bit. <laughs> Even that bit is enough. Vinny wins another duel. Leaves Taco dead. And KNG just trying to save this orb once again. And Money, well, with him saving this, it's plausible. Fire and Lucas can buy. KNG can drop one. I imagine that'll mean, obviously, the Fallen or Taco is probably going to be taking the hit. He needs to keep this orb, though. Luckily for him, Henny walks past at zombie like speed. Makes that kill very easy indeed. But. Nonetheless, still a very good round coming out from Furia. Depends what kind of zombie movie you're talking about. Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was probably like the last zombie movie I would ever expect <laughs> you to say, but I probably should have expected it. It's a good movie. It's not a bad one. Oh. Wasn't a big fan, but it wasn't, wasn't bad. Yeah, it's, it's British humor, so, you know, I'm going to love it. Another timeout coming in for Furia again. Thing is, it's not like they've dismantled the double op setup for MIBR. It's just that they've actually somehow been able to get a couple of rounds and just out position one of the other oppers. I, 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 I don't know. It's, 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 it's not like they've been beating it like flat out. Obviously, they're not like having any challenge against it, but they have been kind of like working around it. Mm. I think the smokes they used in the last round were purely to get people to watch for the wraparound. I think the they got very lucky in pop. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I think, what, that was almost 180 damage, or something, 177 damage and no kills. Yeah. Like, that, that is unlucky as hell. And then they were smart enough to boost up, which I think that's great. But that round very easily could have gone in the other direction. Fallen. Going to be cooking a little bit there. Lots of incendiaries thrown out initially. I'd watch that show, Cooking with Fallen. Yeah, unfortunately, it was Cooking Fallen. Oh, that's a bit of a mischeck from Kesarado. He's just going to run r right past Fur. Look how much damage, though. Every player other than Taco is tagged. Boost going to be coming over the top. Ah, oh, now trades Fallen. Well, he doesn't know how close he was to getting a free kill. Even still, though, this round has stagnated a bit. 
Both teams just slowing to a halt, maybe expecting the other to make a move, and instead it's KNG just doesn't move. He shoots through things and actually finds a second as well. Leaves just Vinny and Henny. This is going to be tough. I don't really know how Henny got away with that. I suppose a little bit of a low player on the other side. He's hoping that this has given space to his teammate, just making an awful lot of noise before Lin is not budging with his position, knowing that KNG should have him covered, but now he has to switch. But Fenny can push out, actually, in the meantime, if he wanted, because both angles, both ops looking towards his direction. Fallen has turned back towards Pop. And now with them working together, it actually creates some space. Fallen takes a hefty amount of damage. Vinny has gotten to the bomb set. The problem is the bomb, it's not on Vinny's hands, it's on Henny, who has to try to kind of throw it across. Hope Vinny can pick it up with 18 seconds left to get the bomb down, but KNG's gonna be watching. KNG will get Henny down. Vinny now in a one on three. He's gonna be sticking the plant. Low HP, it is possible, but he has to take down KNG, who's flanking him from behind. Now as the CTs close in around Vinny, like a pack of lions around a lonely gazelle, MIBR will close out the round and go up to 12. Yeah, great round from Kenji. Four kills off the back of that AWP is mentioned on this CT side. That is where he just seems to step up. It looks like they might just be hunting for different pieces of utility, which uh, that is a smart thing to do if you have the time on the bomb, which they do. The bomb could help out Fury a little bit. The thing is the loss bonus isn't really there. I, I, I kind of think you have to just maybe buy a few pistols in this round, but that doesn't seem to be really in their ballpark. They like to force off the back of things. They like to put the pressure on the CT economy. And on a map like Train, I really can understand that because you don't want to allow them to just continuously have these AWPs, even if you manage to take weapons away. However, this time, nope, yeah, they're going to do it again. I, I'm not surprised. Yeah, with what Fury did yesterday and what they've done today, just buying up consistently in these rounds. They win this one though, and it's, it definitely is worth it, but that, that's asking a lot. Yeah. Luckily, the two men who actually have the weapons are exactly the two players who I want to see on them. Yeah, there's an argument for Caserato as well, but and he's already going to be spotted. Attacker will take him down straight through the wood. It's not going to keep you safe. And just smoke it off. He is very good at playing this B site. Like, it, it's a tough role to play. That nade is disgusting. <laughs> oh my goodness, over 100 damage just done off the back of a $300 investment. Taco definitely knows the positions he needs to be playing and on the flash is coming. Kenji, his spam through the smoke, doesn't actually manage to do anything, but he does connect onto one. This is looking like a no-show, but Henny still manages a couple of kills. However, Fur, born in the darkness, comes in behind them, closes it out. Even though we saw such a one-sided game on Overpass, and with MIBR obviously knowing knowing train down to a T and able to have such a strong double up setup, I do want to give credit to Fury to pull the round so close. This isn't like a, a bad sign at all for the team, and as we potentially move into Mirage, I feel like Fury still have that slight edge, at least in this series, or ideally have it on that map. Look at Fur again, get aggressive. No one expects it, and MIBR just cleaning up these kills. Obviously, it's just against the pistols, but race landslide round for them to stabilize some sort of economy, even if they do lose out in some rounds. And Fur's on 9,200 bucks. I think that's five kills in two rounds with the SMG. Yeah, this is something that you never wanted to allow for MIBR, and that's the one real problem they've had is denying this double orb setup for the CT side has not been something that Furia has really been able to manage. They have managed to get a few rounds on this T side, and a lot of it's come off the back of like some decent setups and some good individual plays as we've seen before. However, I just don't think they were able to string enough rounds on their CT side. That's the yeah. big problem. Like The T side that came out from MIBR was very good, and now all they have to do is just get it over the line. Whereas for Furia, they're having to fight tooth and nail for every single round that they get. And even some of the ones that they come very, very close, they'll probably look back on and go, ah, if they'd won that or if we'd won that. But ultimately, I think it comes down to their CT side just not quite being enough. And they haven't had any real clean rounds either on the T side. Like, you, like you've been saying, they've been fighting tooth and nail just to lock down one of these rounds. 19 kills for Kesarada, 24 for Yuri. Art, again, only on seven. But imagine this could be a completely different story if Art was able to step up a little bit in terms of kills. Like I see again, Fur gonna be holding up close. He's been changing up his position so consistently on the CT side, keeping Furia 
guessing as much as possible. And fear hoping that MIBR just get aggressive. I mean, look at look at Yuri sitting out towards Ivy, waiting for or hoping that someone's gonna get aggressive and push so he can get a free kill. But I think MIBR realized they're in the driver's seat. I think a lot of the time this is the far effect. <laughs> like you expect him to do something aggressive, so when he doesn't necessarily do it, you're waiting for it. Yeah. And it, it it is annoying. Like I I still think back to like the legendary Fnatic roster where JW did so many insane things on Inferno that teams started to predict the insane things and then you just didn't do them anymore. So you just sat there waiting and burning down your own clock. Fur definitely has that same sort of ability. Vinny is going to be sneaking his way fairly far forward. This could come down to timing as you can see Taco just switching between the two different positions while sitting on the middle of the bomb train. Kill comes in onto Ivy, but that's the opening that Vinny was looking for. Unfortunately, Lucas is there defending off the site. They're looking to rotate back around and fur. Well, that's as easy as it gets. Caserado just falls into his crosshair and Art now trying to style his way in. Will be able to get the pick. Even still, they're at a man disadvantage with 20 seconds on the clock. The Molotov just trying to section anyone off coming in from the connector. But oh, oh that's so important. That's integral. That kill could have just changed the round. Fallen also missing a shot. They've given them a way back in. Lucas in on the flank of Fallen kind of has to wait here. He's looking for some space. He's going to throw out the smoke. Oh, <laughs> the timing. So smart. So perfect, but Art, he now knows where the last man is. He knows he's coming in from behind. Just get around the corner. Maybe could have just waited. Instead, tried to play the time. And while it's time for Matt Point to be on the board for MIBR. Lucas with a much better performance into this one. There's going to be no reflective KDs in this. Much to my dismay. Fallen, by the way, that was like a 400 IQ play. He throws the smoke in towards Pop Dog. So then the T side of Fury is like, okay, well, there's not going to be anyone there because he thinks someone's going to be in Pop Dog, smoke him out so they can push up, right? And at the exact same time, before the smoke plumes, Lucas pushes out and catches him at an E box. I want to know, like, I know that the him pushing out afterwards would have been in intentional if the timing on that peak was that spot on then fallen is a genius which i think we already know but like genuinely i think it was a genius like because that timing was pinpoint like the second the headshot goes there's smoke in his way which is insane nonetheless fury are now fighting to try and survive in this map fur once again just playing around the edges of the smokes He's gonna get that opening pick. KNG is there alongside him and Fur sneaks through to put one more in the grave. It is 16-11 for MIBR. They turn things back on their map choice. I can't say I'm overly surprised. Like, they are a good trained team. They have all the right pieces to